So we're going to be talking a lot about uh, multiphonics. <laughs> You'll be shocked to hear. Um, and it's, it's really interesting because in some ways Scott's done something really brave because a lot of what, he, what he's put in here is not information that he had from me. So he's adding uh, flutter tongue to multiphonics. Um, there's a lot of kind of starting with, with a full multiphonic and then going up into the, the highest pitch. There's uh, some kind of descending in microtones from multiphonics. And there was absolutely no guarantee that, I mean, when you were writing this, it was very, very kind of, uh, with collaboration in mind, I think, because... Mecca myself saw an opportunity to do something we hadn't really, we hadn't tried before. A couple of composers trying to have equal input on a piece of work uh, that would end up not being my piece or your piece or your piece, that it would be something truly collaborative in both the best and the po worst possible way. It was going to be a brutal cross-forcing of ideas onto each other and cross-pollination. If you look at the piece overall, my strategy was to start with bars where the full it would be the same multiphonic throughout it. As it goes on, there are more places where there are bispigliandos, which are essentially moving between two multiphonics, although they're, they're so close to each other that they don't really make a difference. And then yeah. some places where it is explicitly multiple multiphonics happening quickly. And they're the ones that I felt yeah, I, was, I was playing safest with because I thought these are not probably not going to work. If you imagine two composers collaborating with each other, I think normally you would try to imagine two composers who have kind of similar ideas about how to write music, and that's not what, we, what we're doing here. It, in a positive way, I, I don't have to worry about what might work and what won't work. I can just say, I've been pushed into this corner, so now I have to fight my way out of this corner, and let's just throw a bunch of things at it and see which things stick. Okay, we talk a lot about multiphonics on different instruments not working. It's, I think it's really important as clarinet players that you, you take that with a little bit of a grain of salt because the other thing that, that people don't tell you is how much you have to practice multiphonics. And not only as sounds on their own, but you need to practice them in context. So the way this piece is actually, as it stands, it's not so difficult. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't move so quickly. There's not a lot of flashy technique, but I would have to play through, through the whole thing over and over again in order to get the sound of the multiphonics in my head. This is something that I've tried to argue before in other contexts, that writing this way, the virtuosity isn't in the fingers, the virtuosity is all in there and there. Yeah. Because that's where, you may not be doing big fast finger changes, but what's happening in here and here is happening to, to change quite radically into quite specific places. Yeah. But the idea that you can change notes on this instrument without needing to change fingers, that it can all happen from in here, in the same way that a string player can find harmonics without having to press, depress strings, etc. So th this, uh, that really opened up the idea that you could control more what's happening inside the multiphonics. And if you've got the control to do that, then those kind of multiphonics are really easy, where you're just overblowing low notes. Yeah. Yeah, and they're fun. Testing is sort of key at the outset, and it will become perhaps less of an issue maybe going forward because we might learn things. And uh... the, the prime example is that one moment where, where you were showing the multiphonic played just the, as its lowest note and you were doing the, was it smorzando or bispigliando, I forget which, and you were just building up the multiphonic across that yeah. and then back down. And that was beautiful because that showed me that, oh, you can do that. That's the instance where that behavior works really well. And then the versions I've notated are just guesses. So this is a chance to see what, what of my and your guesses actually can work and what don't, and then build from there. That's stunning, actually. That works really well, 40 to... Yeah, that sounds beautiful. The, the smorts is very really nice. It's yeah. very supple. I think really that's going to work. Just ignoring what's on the score for the moment, in terms of articulating that, can you articulate that kind of fast? And... Yes. 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 <laughs> Fantastic. What about moving between the low note and the high note on their own? Like, on the low note and the low note on the high note? I can't, get, I can't get the B without the multiphonic. So what happens is... Yeah. In yeah, terms of I taking like something away from a workshop, for me, that's a, now having seen that you can do that on that one, I can think, oh, well then I can put that in in places where it's just the low C, then it expands out into the multiphonic, and then back down again. Yeah. 
yeah. And there's exactly. the beast. But that's often how it happens. I mean, this is this is why we have these things. So totally. you can try and get inside what we've written and then say, well, what about if you tried this? You don't see a lot of pieces with a lot of like articulated multiphonics. No, I really fear. didn't think it would work. I really yeah. thought you'd send this back to me and say, no. Well, I did a lot of that today, though. Yeah. The idea was also to offer a lot of alternatives. Yeah, exactly. like once we got to talking about slap tones and, and articulation and things like this, so that, that you know um, how many possibilities there are. So to try to feed back your imaginations a little bit. It's a little easier to hear, I think, the whole chord when they're loud on loud ones. Yeah, do a couple of loud ones. That's really effective. Because it, it's almost like you're striking something that resonates and then the resonance just carries on. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. Was that worked better or worse on different multiphonics? I just played just... I played maybe ten just now at random. Yeah. And I don't know if you heard something you didn't like. No. You never met a multiphonic you didn't like though. That's pretty much true. <laughs> A sharp starts to break. I mean, it's there, yeah. but I'm not sure it's how. I mean, I'm not sure it's how you want to start your A sharp, since the A sharp is the most fragile thing. Absolutely. I'm more likely to get that with it. It's fascinating because it actually it makes other notes come out instead. Yeah. Well, that's the thing that, that flutter tongue and multiphonics are amazing mm. because in some cases, especially with the the close dyads. In a lot of cases, it makes them so much easier. They stabilize. And actually, the next multiphonic that you've written, super stable with the flutter tongue. I'll just move the flutter tongue onto that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving the flutter tongue to the next one works fine for me because it's still articulating a difference from one bar to the next. There really is a genuine part of me that thinks them seeing their lectures in difficult positions, or difficult, they're, I mean, they're creative problems and sometimes they're logistical problems, yeah. but um, where you're saying that's not going to work, that's important because it's important for them to realise that that's never going to stop. So the problem with these, with these multiphonics where you've got, you've got a top note and a bottom note and then you've got one in the middle that we can hear when I'm playing the top note right. is I can't isolate it. <laughs> So if I'm playing the top one, I lose the, I lose the F, and if I'm playing the bottom one, I don't have that F yet. The multiphonics work because you've got two air columns trying to happen at the same time, largely the lower one and the high note, so the middle note is coming out of the interaction of the high and low. So if I take away the low note, the middle note can't happen because yeah. there's nothing to interact exactly. with. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. This is how creativity gets done. You make mistakes, you trip over things, yeah. and you pick it up, and, and you we, move it around and try it another way. So the, the bottom note and the top note are the most important thing, actually. Yeah. And, and some composers say, well, I can be more flexible, you know, I can just write a, a block, it doesn't matter what... But actually, it's so much easier to play when you know what notes are coming out. Even if you're flexible on that, and you don't mind some squeaky thing or wrong notes, to put a, a guide in really helps. I think in the case of something like bar 12, what I was after was to say, so it starts as the full multiphonic, yeah. and as it gets quieter, there is less of the multiphonic. So I, I was over-detailed. Yeah. That's the same, where, anywhere where that happens, 28 is the same, it was just okay. less to more. But it would be interesting to see, is it possible to get gradients oh, yeah. of less and more, or is it always full multiphonic or just one note? practice that one a little bit but you can hear the sound quality of the multiphonic changes a lot when I get louder actually maybe it, maybe it works if you've got the the brackets around the notes because it does hmm, I don't know you want some kind of notation that reflects the the change in color of the multiphonic with the dynamic if I'm thinking instead about color and quality of sound and that change then that gives me a kind of then I'm not necessarily worried about something dropping out or yeah but just thinking about the right thing we have a single output, and you're going to mix Spencerize it a bit, and I'm going to Scott McLaughlin it a bit. <laughs> and sometimes we'll look at something and think, well, I'm, no, I'm going to have to think a little bit differently here, and maybe I'll try and be you, and you'll try and be me. Yeah. Who knows? Yes. 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 <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs>